Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we pick the right topics, get the right guests, and ask the relevant questions on issues that matter to you. Tonight, we're going to the ECG to speak to the managing director on a number of issues surrounding power supply, metering, issues of billing, issues of the cash waterfall mechanism, and whether we'll have power throughout this last quarter of the year. Samuel Dubik Mahama is my guest. Stay with us. Welcome back. So my guest is the Managing Director of ECG, Mr. Samuel Dubik Mahama. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening and thank you for having me. How are you doing? I could be better. I've seen better days, but uh, <laughs> we are still soldiering on for God and country. For a company like yours, is it true that when you're not in the news, it means it's good? Yeah, well, you see, for a company like us, we, they, we are not remembered for the good we do. We are remembered only for the mm. bad. Mm. So whenever we are not being spoken of, it means everything is okay, mm. everything is stable. Mm. The moment you hear of us, that means we are having problems with our customers. You took over in May 2021. So you've yes. done three years and a couple of months. What was the state of ECG when you took over? I, I, do you think it's three years? It's two, isn't it? 2021 May. So 2022 is one year. Uh -huh. 23 is two years. Uh -huh. 24 is three years. So... So you've done three years? Three years. Then that means it's, then it can't be correct because it would rather be... 2022. 2022. So you took yes. over in 2022? Yeah. Okay. May, May 13th, 2022. Before the big economic crisis yes. of July, August, yes. which ended in December with yes. all of that. Wow. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you've done two years and a couple of months. Yes, that's correct. So what was the state of ECG when you took over? When I took over ECG, ECG was going through its all... Um, reforms, mm. but uh, we realized that we had to fast track the reforms. Okay. One of the main ones was the well, operational turnaround, mm -hmm. which meant that we had to digitize our processes to make us customer friendly mm -hmm. and also to close the gap and raise the required revenue. Mm -hmm. I remember vividly when I took over, our revenue was within a range of about 400, 500 million Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. But currently we are averaging a billion and a billion two in a month, which uh, within two, two years, some may say it's, it's a very remarkable thing. Mm. But some may also say it's tariff, mm. but I would say tariff has been increased by about 70, 75%. So that means that ECG must be doing something right. Because the revenue increase is more, is about a bit more than double. Yes, that's So correct. it couldn't just be tariff. Yes. Could it be more customers coming on board? It, what I would want to credit it to, because you know, we also did, we're also going through a know your customer drive. Yeah. where we are tagging all our customers with a unique QR code. Mm -hmm. uh, we tag the customer to the home, the meter, the wood pole, and the transformer that's feeding the customer. Uh -huh. So I would rather want to credit that to reforms like ECG going totally cashless within the company, mm -hmm. ECG having an app that is very customer friendly, mm -hmm. ECG simplifying its processes to make the customers appreciate mm -hmm. to the fact that a, you, you are able to, to understand or when you are complaining about something, you actually have the right things to say about the complaints that you have. But beyond revenue doubling, what about profit? So they are, they are not the same thing. They are not the same thing <laughs> because whenever you talk about our system losses, mm -hmm. there's a tendency to do profit and loss accounting with yeah. energy accounting. They are two totally different things. Mm -hmm. Profit and loss accounting is already always affected by Forex. Mm. So you can never put that into the, or factor that into the equation. But when you're doing energy accounting, it's about how much electricity you've sold and how much of that money you've what, collected back. Currently, about a week ago, KPMG finished an operational report for us, which pointed out that uh, we have reduced our system losses to about 26% now, from an original 30, 31% that I came to meet. So- Do you distinguish between commercial and technical we do distinguish between commercial technical and collection mm -hmm. so they are all different things technical has to do with the lines and whether it's carrying the right power yeah. uh, collection is the rate at which or the rate at which you're able to claim the money from the customers mm -hmm. and commercial is most of your practices within the company how efficient they are to make you customer friendly for you to be able to collect or ex expedite or do your work so within the period, can you share, for example, collection loss? Because it's, that's one of the things people have spoken about a lot, that particularly because of postpaid meters, 
collection losses have been high. Do you have any numbers to show the reduction? So instead of doing numbers, I would like to give you an example or explain the kind of predicament that we are in. All right. We have about 4.5 million customers, All right. of which 2 million of them are postpaid customers, mm -hmm. and the other 2 million are prepaid customers. Good. The 2 million prepaid customers, also with the prepaid that was started, have meters that are running their lifespan as we speak. What most people don't know is that meters do, at a certain point, don't work as efficient as they are supposed to. So maybe you can say they are expiring, they are becoming obsolete. You can use all the English that you want to, but that meter itself is not reading well. So that's a place where you also have some form of collection loss. That aside, those with postpaid meters, they have, they have delinquency period because of the, the 30 to 60 day billing cycle means that they are not always on time with their payments, which always creates a lag or some level of debt within the system that we always have to, we, we, that we always hear in us going on revenue mobilization exercise, revenue mobilization exercise. These are the gaps that we always try to close so that the, the, the debt situation becomes much better. I see. Because I remember uh, in 2023, we were told your collection losses hit $2 billion in nine months. This story was written in November. So this is six months after, you, probably, no, a year and a few months after you took over. The ACG recorded an increase in its losses in the first nine months of 2023. The company recorded a total loss of 2.50 million, which is 2.05 million, yeah. as collection losses as of September 2023. Now, that's surprising because you launched a, an aggressive collection drive. Was it that we hadn't seen the full length of that to still have a, a loss, or is it that we don't know the figure that was before? So, so we knew the figure that was before, but we, are, we have a culture where if you are not seen, you are not paid. So ECG staff have to be in the faces of their customers for their customers to pay. The moment you lag behind for, let's say, a month or two, you create a debt situation in the system. Our customers have not cultivated the habit of let's say, being on time with their payments and making sure that if it's the end of every month, maybe I'm at least dropping some level of some coins. So you realize that they don't drop the coins, they don't drop the coins, they don't drop the coins. By the time you hit them, the debt is at the level that the person cannot even pay. And the excuse that you normally get is, oh, it's because we didn't receive a bill. But at this point in time, should we also waive the electricity you've used? So it, 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 it puts us in a very tight spot where we need to find a way to judge all and have a better understanding with our customers to close the gap. Don't also forget that within, within those periods, we were going through an operational turnaround where we were fixing our systems or getting the right digital equipment in place for us to forward face or front face our customers. So within that period, a, our collection losses did take a hit. Because that's the same year within which we had that ransomware, what do you call it, attack thing that well, we, we managed to take care of. And so that was true. Yeah. But the, the vice president said that there was a, an attack on the system ostensibly to sabotage the movement towards cashless. Was it there was a statement towards cashless or Basically, towards the change? Towards upgrading the way you work. And that he said staff of the company attacked the system with ransomware. This is what the vice so, president so said. So for me, what I would say to that is, there's an investigation going on. So maybe probably the vice president is privy to the final investigation report or has some inkling to whatever is going there. But I have not been furnished. But there was an attack. There was an attack. That, and, there's no two ways How did that it. affect the system? So looking at a company that has a potential of raising about 50 to 60 million in a day, if you're not able to vend for a week, how much have you lost? Mm -hmm. how, how are you going to bring yourself back into the game? So, yes, we did lose a lot. We had a few good companies consult for us and advice. And we actually have a quantity of about the amount of money that we do know the amount of money that we lost yeah. within that period, which you would say yeah. ranges between uh, about 400 to 500 million Ghana cities within that period. Wow. Within the same September 2023, going a year behind, you also increased your system losses from 2.5 billion to 4.03 billion. Yeah. Your technical losses also, um, they, they, that came down. Yeah. So technical losses came down from 2.7 to 1.2. Yeah. But system losses increased from 2.5 
to 4.0. How so, does that so work? So you know all of those things come together to give you the system loss. Right. So a better technical loss will juxtapose with the commercial loss and all of that. Then they give you an average of your total system losses. So sometimes instead of looking at it in a separate terms, you always do your best to make sure that, okay, which one do I bring down and which one do I fix? Mm -hmm. For example, when you talk about a technical loss, you have mm -hmm. to be looking at areas where there are enough transformers, the power is stable, there's availability of power for, the, for consumption so you can build. Now, with commercial, what are your activities that you're engaging in to make sure that the customer is able to consume so you, and, be, and get billed right? Now, with the collection, is the rate at which you collect the money owed you. So all of these things working, synchronized and working properly, gives you your perfect system loss or a perfect working company. Now, within that period, as I said, digitization took the front stage. Mm. We were trying to use systems to close the gap. So as I speak to you now, most of these interfaces that we have with our customers are, are codified and have been put in a workflow format that to buy and large, I can tell you we are even paperless when it comes to our customers. So if even you want a new service connection, you go onto the app or you go onto our web page and then you follow the processes and the prompts okay. and then we get If what it. you are saying is true, and this is my last question in this area, if what you're saying is true, it means that we are in August um, 2024. It means that your system loss would have been lower compared to last year. Your technical loss will also be lower. Your commercial loss will be lower. Can you confirm this? Because I have the figures for the 2023 here. So what I can confirm to you is that our total system loss is lower now, which is 26%. Lower than it was in 2023. 2023 and 2020. So actually, what you should have now should be the system loss for 2023. Compared to the... Pre exactly. And it's 26% as against 30%. Yes. 20, so is that the most important number, the, the so percentage? The percentage is the most important number because don't forget, every percentage is 120 million. Because if you invested so much in a system, yeah. moving from 30 to 26 doesn't seem that big. Yes. You get it? Because if such a big investment has been made into getting a cashless system, you think that the loss will reduce from 30 so to maybe 20, is, 10 or something. But that's the, that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest challenge. The company's biggest problems are meters. Mm. Then there, Do you have meters that have gone past their lifespan that are still on people's walls? Currently, okay. we have a problem where people's meters are going into the negative. Okay. Why is it going into a negative? If something is working perfectly, why is it that all of a sudden it's giving you a negative balance? It means it's not working well. Mm. And so steps need to be taken to, f to close this gap. Do okay. not forget, ECG as a company hasn't been capitalized for any CAPEX projects yeah. since 2008. Right. So this operational turnaround must be seen as very remarkable because we used our operational capital okay. to do CAPEX which in, in all around the world is the wrong thing to do. That's a bad business practice because it's going to be expensive on the, it's going to take its toll on the company. Let's talk about meters. The ECG said that the public should be wary of fake meters. Yes. And for somebody who's not in the sector, like, ah, can somebody who's not ECG import a meter? Because we, we don't manufacture a lot of meters. Do you manufacture meters in Ghana? We do. We, we okay. do. Some people say assembling plant, but I say manufacture. They manufacture meters yeah, in Ghana. Yeah, because when, uh, for example, before we go to it, this, I, when I came onto your show mm. a couple of years back or a, mm. year, a year or so back, I told you about the loss reduction program that we're about to launch. Yeah. We did it with six companies in mm -hmm. Ghana mm -hmm. who we asked to set up their factories because when I became MD, what I realized was when we are purchasing meters, we purchase meters, someone dumps the meter on you and then goes away. It became very, very clear that we needed on-prem support when we had the ransomware issues where you now have to wait for someone to wake up in China. And fly here. Uh, not even fly here, to wake up in China, you grant him desktop for access his, yes. to enter the system it to it try. It wasn't even secure. It wasn't secure. Yes. So now, how would you even know whether this person hasn't found a different way to vend and all of that? So now we said, for a company, we are not purchasing meters. What we are doing is, this is your contract for meter. When you install and it's working, you have to put skin in the game. Through this, we've reduced our financing costs. So cost. now the meter belongs to them in a way. So what it is is that it doesn't belong to them. As soon as it's installed, it has ECG written so on it. So what role do they have whilst the meter is 
what the role they have is they are development partner. Okay. They have the assurance because they have a contract with you that you're going to pay them for the meter. Okay. So as soon as the meter is installed, it becomes my product. Mm -hmm. After we after after we generate the revenue from it, yeah. that month we got we pay you. Okay. So if it's working, you get your money. Yeah. That's the point. Because at some point you used to import about hundred thousand meters, ten thousand don't work. Where are you going to find the person to replace it? So now you need to get the metering companies to also have some form Which of Which is why they started sort of assembling or putting the fire exactly. piece together exactly okay so that so that we will do the factory acceptance test mm, here mm, mm. we have standards authority inspecting mm -hmm. and don't forget the millennium challenge account mida and the mca and the mida gave us one of the best systems i would say the mms which is the meter management system mm -hmm. this system allows us to know where our meter is and know whether our meter has been tampered with or not okay so it's it's this has aided us to close the gap quickly but it's still not fast enough because this is a capital intensive project. So you're project. saying if there's a, it's possible to have a meter that you have not sanctioned. Yes. Somebody can install it. Yes. And it may work initially, but eventually. Because somebody even giving you that meter is based on what tariff? Good point. So you have that meter in your house. I don't know about the meter. Who is taking the money? But you have so many different types of meters. So how do you know? So you have, the last time we checked over 50. 15 or 50. I thought initial was 50. Me, I'm not going to defend that position because, as I said, so let's even say I stand for the present and the future. Let's even say there are 20 yeah. types of meters. Yeah. How would, don't you think there must be a more standardized... That is what we have now with how the many, MMS. How, how many do we have? So right now we have the MMS compliant meter. So whatever you do, the specifications are clear as to what your meter type is. So yeah. I can have... Um, 20 companies giving me a meter. Mm -hmm. So the meter name could be Bernard. The other one could be Kofi, Kwesi. All of them have the same specifications. And they all have to speak to the MMS system. Okay. So right now, it doesn't really matter. So far as the specifications are right and are synchronized, that is it. So the brands so how, could be alive. So how, if you say public should be wary of fake meters, yeah. how will an uninitiated person know what a fake meter is? So my, my first thing to you is purchase your meters from ECG. You don't even actually purchase a meter. A meter is part of a service connection. Mm -hmm. Anybody asking you to pay more than a certain prescribed amount mm -hmm. means that what? It's not an ECG person. Now, if you even want a meter now, mm -hmm. the service is so easy that you go onto the app, go for new service request, insert it, go there. If it's a single phase, it's a three phase, you see the whole amount, your Ghana card, mm -hmm. every single thing. We have used this process to gather some very, very, very good mm. uh, information as to the locations that are coming up that we need to close the gap on by doing a lot of intensification. Because as I keep saying to everybody, we are naturally very quiet and we are naturally shy away from, let's say right now, I'd say, hey, Bernard, mm. you have money. Mm. What would you say? Oh, I don't get money. I don't get money. My <laughs> money don't come. But go turn around. Bernard is building a home. Mm. You understand? So it's, it's based on these little secrecies that I, I keep saying that a place like Chado, I use the normal use that Santi word, Ajim Insem, it has grown at a very tremendous rate that ECG is playing catch up with the terms of intensification materials, having to put in some transformers, having to inject new poles. Same thing in Oyarifa, same thing in the Amasamai, Media, all of the, every, everybody. Growing up, we've all been told. But how is he able to grow without your knowledge? Because I thought if I put up a house and I'm coming to get electricity, I need a permit of some kind, and my, I have to come to you. And based on the design of my building, you will know the capacity of the house. So is it that people circumvent the system? You what, are talking about an ideal world. So what's some the real people situation? don't even do that. They even finish building their home. And they find a quack electrician and even join them to the grid with no recourse to ECG. Even if you build a $2 million house? I'm telling you, so you you'll be surprised. Since we started this KYC, mm. it will, you would realize that at the right time when we are about to announce, realize that our, four point, our number of 4.5 million meters is more than that. Mm. We have more than that as customers. It's a sector that is growing and it's finding its feet. Good. So let's end on meters on this point. Prior to your coming, the Auditor General had done an audit of ECG which said you procured 862,000 meters and its assessments amounting to $1.5 million over the audit period of 2016 to 2021 without adhering to the requirements of Public Procurement Act. So there were 50 contracts. How has this situation changed? Because you took over in 2022. How many contracts did you sign? How many meters were procured? 
and Bernard, did this satisfy the procurement Bernard, law? Very, very first thing. Mm. I came to meet a very huge question, which everybody says ECG is subject to PPA, yes. public procurement. Public. Yeah. In the same vein, there are Supreme Court decisions, mm -hmm. and I have an attorney general decision. I have different lawyers giving me a decision, making us very aware that we are not subject to PPA. Now, so if you should agree with the Auditor General's view that you have to I subject have, your I procurement a, to PPA Act? I have a contrary opinion after reading the law and uh, after seeing the Attorney General's position paper to ECG. For example, mm. there's an outage within this area. Mm. What do I do? Do I wait to go to PPA to sanction a contractor to come and fix it? Then how long will it take? They are talking about standardized. The PP also talks about bringing in a standardized agreement that you would insert. Most of our components are dollar based. Mm -hmm. So for us, when you even talk about Forex loss, yeah. it doesn't only hit us with uh, IPPs. It also hits us with our inputs. Because from the transformers to the cables to the mm -hmm. meters, everything is dollar denominated. So we are running an industry where if we are not getting cost reflective tariffs or we are not getting the right capital investment into mm -hmm. the company, mm -hmm. you'd be seen to be doing well, yet it may, may be eroded by, let's say, something like Forex. But I still don't see how that relates to the procurement of CA meter. So let me explain my part of that to you. Mm -hmm. With that conversation going on yeah. and not be wanting to wade into it, mm -hmm. what under my tenure we've done is this. The, Whenever an engineer is doing something, they call something an engineer's price. Mm -hmm. ECG has its own procurement manual and procurement plan with the engineer's price fixed in. Mm -hmm. It's that same price we've offered to everybody. But does that align with the Public Procurement Act? But that's the thing I'm telling you, that if I am not subject to the Procurement Act... Then but how are you not subject to it? Where did we get the funds from? No, you're a public organization. No, let's, let's, let's discuss. I'm no, a public... I, no. no, I want us to discuss this yes. because I, I was... Some, someone sued me. And the court said, it's what? It's settled law that ECG is not subject to the public So have you written back to the Public Procurement Authority or to the Auditor General to say, on the basis of this judgment? We have, we have had that engagement with the Auditor so General. Is there going to be an amendment of the Public Procurement Act as it pertains to ECG? So or will there be a note to the Auditor General so that in their subsequent audits, they will take note of the judgment. That, I just want to be understand. Yes, yes. the last part, the last part you, you just said is what is underway. Has, that has been underway for about five, four, four months now with the Auditor General, even including how we are being audited subsequently. But the PPA, do they agree that these judgments mean that the way they interpret the Public Procurement Act in relation to you has to change? I can't speak, you for, can't them, speak for them. You can't speak for them. But you are going, I just want yeah, you to engage them. Yeah, no. So if, in terms of engagement, yes, I do know we've engaged them. We've written to them. We've added uh, the opinions and other stuff to them. So for us, I think uh, instead of anybody taking a belligerent stand yeah. to feel like you are entitled to something or not, I think from what you've said, yeah. calls for a roundtable. For us to all understand, to let, let the person know that, look, if I'm saying this and you're saying that, yeah. then where do we go? Because don't forget, this is the same ECG that was, became PDS. Yes. So under PDS, were they supposed to go to Public Procurement Act for I, any purchases? But it's no longer PDS. PDS is no, a no, private no, company. No, I mean, I, but I'm just saying, when, when it transi transitioned to PDS, yes. were they supposed to use PPA? Because government still had a, a percentage in it. Yeah, but PDS can answer that, but you are ECG. <laughs> so I, the last point yeah, around meters, yeah. a lot of people are concerned that, yes, we don't have to buy fake meters, but sometimes there are shortages so I go to Kwabenya, I need a meter for a showman, and they just keep tossing me, right? How do we deal with such things? Bernard, as I told you, currently, I, unless someone, someone hasn't dealt with ECG directly, I'll tell you for a point blank that I don't believe... So if anybody a goes to an ECG office just to request follow, for a meter... Don't, you don't even have to get to the go office. Online go to the online. App. What if, go I, to the what app. if I'm not app literate? Oh. So maybe I am not educated but and I want a meter. So, so people still use mobile money? Yes. And how many people is there, are Is there a USSD version? Yes, there's a USSD version. Star so, 226 hash. But you know a lot of people are very concerned about using this. My point is, so, so I think people don't need to go to your office to request Oh, you meter. can go. When you go, they'll walk you through it. There'll be a lovely lady or gentleman there who who do the whole process for you using their computer or using their own cell phones, which is one thing I must thank the staff for. 
they've been they've been remarkable in embracing this digital journey that mm. is, is is exciting so they would help you through the whole process and make sure that the whole thing gets underway you start re receiving text messages as to when it's going to be installed so just are you saying that if anybody goes online on the phone to request for a meter it's automatic it's automatic What's the now? average time it takes from when i send a text to get a meter installed? right now i have two different services uh -huh. we have the premium service and you pay based on what service you want if it's a single day service. so let's say the ordinary service the ordinary service is about a week but it's then you can decide to work that system to delay so people will be no, and go for the premium system. no not at all so ordinary system is a week the ordinary system is a week between a, when i send the it's a request a it's and a when week. the meter gets to my house, yes, one it, week. It's one week. You are serious. I'm very serious. Currently, for the whole country that you cover, for the portion where I cover, that's what I. If do. I send, if I go online to the app which I have Bernard. here, and oh. I make a request for a meter, oh, in one week it will be installed. See, you are the same guy. I came here. I told you that at some point people will touch the card to the back of their phone and purchase power. You're like, ah, I'm holding you up to it. Have you tried it? Well, the one I have, the one I have, you put the number of the token in the uh -huh. in the device. Yeah. And, and then, then I'm able to up. buy. So on my own, what but now I'm even telling you that those who have cards, the yeah. non-smart meters, uh -huh. can touch the card. If you go into the app, you see okay. they touch the card, the NFC, to the back of their phone. And it works. And it works. And they purchase. Power. I'm sure the viewers can confirm. Yeah. That. But the one I have, you put the, you pay with Momo. Yeah. And the token is generated on your phone. You enter it. You press. Uh, yeah, yeah, something. and then, then you enter the, you put in the enter button, and then it, so, it, it says good, so, and it goes. Yeah, so with with what is happening now, very soon yeah. it will start being direct. Okay. There are certain portions of what we do that we are trying to migrate it into the cloud space, okay. so that with the data leak, it quickly what feeds into each other, Wonderful. so that you don't even have to enter the code. The code will be a fallback plan whenever there's a network problem Wonderful. that you're having. We're talking to Samadubik Mahama, MD of ECG. If you are watching this on social media, put your comments at the bottom. We'll come back and deal with some controversies which have bedeviled the company. And then we'll talk about the way forward. He's been in office for two years and a few. Stay with us. Welcome back. So on the point of view tonight is MD of ECG, Samuel Dubik Mahama. Took over May 2022. And two years and a couple of months, he says, the company is in a far better position. Two examples, revenue more than doubled from between 450 million to a billion. The cashless system also appears to be working. We were talking about meters. He says, if you apply for a meter on your phone today, you'll get it in a week's time. Let's deal with some controversies. In March, there was a lot of outage. And you were strenuously denying that there was doom so. Forget that. People were asking for a shadow. You didn't give us a shadow. In April, the PU asked, he asked you to give us a shadow. You said no. Later, Gridco reported you to the energy minister. Give us a shadow. You still did not. I mean, for a service-led company, why did you do that? So, we, as you said, we are a service company. Mm -hmm. We are the distributors of power. Yeah. We have a duty to distribute what is given to us. Mm. I don't see what you said about Gridco reporting us as Gridco reporting us. No, okay. I don't see it like that. Okay. We, are, we are a value chain. We work together. They were complaining about a difficulty that they had. We also had a difficulty ourselves. One of the things that was very, 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 very important around that time were the number of power plants that had shut off from routine maintenance. Some of them also started going through what they are like a car. You understand? And I'm glad you quantified it to say the month of March. To some Into people, April. Yes, Into yeah. April, even possibly early May. I, it was mostly March. By the time we got into April, it had, it had it, almost uh, all the power plants had flown in, all the experts. Do you also ordered you to provide a lotion in timetable by April the 2nd? This yeah. was a week into the end of April. Yeah, so they were... That, and, that, and, and even within April, there was still... That, that may seem or that may look like... It's been over a month. It was over a month. Yes, that's why I said a month. Over. In my opinion, I say a month. You say over. Just over but a month. I, I was, I was minding enough. the chair. I was minding the chair so I could say within a month. No problem. You know, you go through a period of heat. Mm -hmm. When you're going through that period of heat, these machines are requested to work at what? Their utmost optimum. Because within that period, is Christmas. It's all the festivities. You can't afford to have any downtimes. So definitely, like any machine, they go through certain phases. But I must take this opportunity to thank all the IPPs. Who, who had problems within that period that the speed with which they moved by getting the requisite experts to fit the problem was remarkable. Again, which problem? They had maintenance issues. 
With at what, some point, what, with, at with, some with, point, with which equipment? At some point, a plant like, let's say, Senpower had a gas valve issue. You don't expect me to run a power plant when a gas valve is not performing. That means I'm going to blow up an asset that is worth about how much? How many hundreds of millions of dollars? Sometimes to, to take a beating from your customers to safeguard certain future prospects is, 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 is sometimes taking... Take, so taking are you a, saying there were challenges with the generation side? There were challenges on the generation side. So how side. did the, the, the power transmitter not know? Because in the letter they wrote to the minister, they basically said they give you specific periods, they schedule you to do outages, and you don't adhere to them. So within that period, as you said, there are certain time frames where the, system, the, the, the generator has a problem. When the generator has a problem, and you tell me, it depends on the timing too, you understand? So based on that, I would not want to go into the nitty gritties, but I must say, through this, we found a fantastic way to work. We found a seamless agenda as to how we are going to streamline this. Don't forget, we are separate entities. Yeah, if it was like a country like ESCOM, which is just one company, it's just a matter of what? A memo. And then this problem is solved. But we are separate, separate entities. By the time, let's say the grid company is seeing something, mm. by the time they are writing to me, or by the time they are sending the information to me, what's the time frame? What's the gap? So what's could it lapse? be that you were not listening for which reason you wrote to the energy minister? Because in a letter that was leaked to the media, that they wrote to your collective boss, that you are not complying. ECG, or me personally. You, ECG, <laughs> were not complying to the various um, requests to provide a low shedding time for customers amid ongoing power outages. So, Is so, it that so I think you, li you didn't listen to them, so they reported it to your boss? That's why I'm saying this problem has been solved. Okay. And I can say for a fact that I don't think they still hold that same view. But what I again will ask would be, it would be nice to have a chit chat with Gridco for you to also understand their difficulties mm. and how they work. Because you, it, it may be easy to just read the letter as is, mm -hmm. because it's not for, you, you, specifically it's not for your consumption. Okay. But if you read it in its literal meaning, mm. you may apportion blame where it's not supposed to. But yes, they were raising a, a serious concern. So you need to read it with engineering English now. I'm telling you. English is English. Our English is not English. It's show. the same thing. We I can read a letter. Listen. They said they have repeatedly asked you to provide a time table. And, and, and you saying, refuse. And it's endangered the system. You don't need to be so, so, an energy so, expert to know so what listen, it means. So listen. <laughs> so it has to do with frequencies. Okay? Uh -huh. So if the person has told you yeah. to do something, yeah. it, what's the speed at which you're supposed to do it? You understand? The person can announce to you, dump X. Dumping X... What are, what, are the, what, what am I supposed to take into consideration? Now, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, the time we were being told to dump X, what's your reaction period? You understand? And what's your reaction period? Who do you choose to dump? And who do you choose to what? keep alive? Because it's still a number. So you are saying it wasn't money. possible to do what they were asking you to do because of the difficulty you faced with the end user. Exactly. That so is all. Why don't you just say that at the time? But, you know, at that point in time, maybe we are family. That is not the conversation to be you had. Family. You are serving Ghanaians, and they, yeah. had, they, needed, they needed a timetable so, to plan so their life. So what then happened was, through that, we were able to sit down to fashion out what a roadmap on how we will manage and take care of these issues. Don't mm. forget, our main aim is never, never to take our customers for granted. And at this point in time, mm. I would like to say a big sorry mm. to our customers. I know it caused a lot of hardship for some of them. Mm. I know the uncertainty dest destabilized a lot of families with how they were taking care of their kids. But I want them to know for a fact that mm. we not selling electricity is a loss in revenue. So we have, we have no reason mm. and no reason not to supply power if we have it. The last thing on that point was beyond the shenanigans with your, com your colleague or your whatever, com com your, your sister company. The, the PRC also said you lied to them because they said <laughs> you had claimed that there were some 360 overloaded transformers. And they basically said that's not true. They, they said when they checked, there was less than six we have further, transformers. We have further gone on to yeah. provide them more details after this. You understand? So, sometimes at the heat of everything, you know, I said when a letter is not really... You know, if I say 360 transformers are being injected and are being uh, are overloaded and all of that. Actually, I said 630. Yes, 630, 630 not yes. 360. 630. 630. That means what? I must demonstrate to them, uh, what do you call it? The work being done, the work that we are going through. 
At the onset of the challenges, all I could do was to speak for ECG. You understand? Then in going through that process, we did our best to quickly through this period inject all of these meters to get them to be working at their full and optimum for, so that when there's enough power to, be, to kick in, what then happens? The distribution frequency is stable. Did you throw that story there to just save the, the image of the government? Because no. the, Mr. Ejekumihini was specific. I interviewed him. He says, we have gone out to all those transformers, at least a majority of the transformers, and it is turning out that those transformers were not overloaded. I will not sit here and call or say anything about blah, 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 but I would say this. If, if anybody had come into ECG, Mm -hmm. had asked for our operations manual, had asked for our maintenance manual, mm -hmm. they would have seen the work that we are doing. This whole thing is evidence-based because our work speaks for itself. It's performance-based too. So, yes, he may have his opinion based on maybe some investigations they've done. I will not take it away from That's him. a regulator. Yeah, I know. So and this is not the place that I'm even going to engage in a fight with my regulator. But the truth, I must say something here. Mm -hmm. The regulator has been one supportive group of people mm -hmm. because they understand the difficulties on the ground they understand the difficulties of the work we do, and that is how they assist us in executing our job. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we actually did put out, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, notices to our customers who we were dealing with when it came to these transformer outages. We shared all of that on our app, through some uh, social media handles, through, through other mediums, even the newspaper publications. So for us, there's so little that we can do as a company, but we welcome the criticisms. Did, did you pay the fine, the 5.8 million that was imposed on board members? You know, we haven't paid that fine because as a company, we are executing our job as uh, agents of the company. How do you find a non-executive director on his person? So these are conversations that we are because having they with thought the that you, you had personal liability, and therefore, if they charge the company, that who, will not affect you. Then who, you are the guys who run the system. Who imposes personal liability? Well, maybe they wanted to leave the veil Aha, of incorporation. So, so, so that that is a conversation that maybe, we have. Maybe, but for us in the public space, that's good because a lot of people, and I'm not saying you, a lot of people commit crimes in the names of companies, yeah. and because the company is not a natural person, if anything at all, the company pays for its resources. So for good. Public Major. accountability. It's great to impose. So we're happy to hear that. So if you were happy to hear that, in yes. the same vein, they said what? When there is fraud, the law has limitations. Mm. The law, if the law was arbitrary, then probably you say, hey, but the law says the only time you can do that is when there's fraud. But if you say there's six TC transformers, which are but overloaded, if, but if and, and their investigation but that the is law, none, but the law also says what? In, in such cases, it's balance of probabilities. It's not a criminal matter. So it's you, balance of probabilities. So did you so, challenge them in court? Maybe very soon. They are a regulator, so yeah. they came up with a conclusion. Yeah, so, but it, they, they, within their, um, their rules, yeah. does it allow? If it doesn't, maybe their rules have to be amended. Maybe they interpreted what you did as fraudulent. Ah, that's Fraudulently what I'm claiming that there were 630 transformers when there was none. Then at that point, I'll clap and say, well, they've usurped the power of what? Well, they've made their judgment. Yeah, but so you can yeah. go and ch challenge it in court. So then, but you have not. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Every single thing has its time. At every given point in time, you have to engage. Mm. And when you engage, you try to get the understanding of the person as at the time and why they did what they did. Mm -hmm. Until I get that understanding, I, I don't want to have a knee-jerk reaction of just going to court. Just the last point on PRC, in March, in the heat of this day, directed you to disperse funds from cash waterfall mechanism. Indeed, on the 20th of March, they asked you to do this by 25th. I do know that by the next quarter and the following quarter, you had started doing that. Was there a particular difficulty that prevented you from disbursing funds from the mechanism as of that same March period? Yes, there was. There, we were asked to, ECG had to procure some fuel. That was mm. giving us the difficulty. Mm. Because if you pay the IPPs, mm. there's so much that is left for the SOEs to share. Mm -hmm. And if also a, de a fuel bill has been placed on you, mm -hmm. who is to suffer the, the, the shortfall of the fuel? Wonderful. It was supposed to be all of us. So mm. that was what created, created that discrepancy. Okay. But that, 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 that thing is under control. Now. We'll come back and look at the future of ECG. Do they need to come together with the other players in the sector to form a larger entity? Will privatization be the solution? And what can we do to keep the lights on for the next few years? Stay with us. Welcome back tonight. We're talking to Samuel Dubik Mahama, 
Managing Director of ECG, the parastatal in charge of power distribution. For those of you who may not know, there's VRA and the other IPPs who generate the power. There's Gridco that transmits, and there's EGC, ECG that distributes the last mile. There's been lots of questions around whether that arrangement needs to be meshed into one so they can be more effective together. There's also conversation about whether we can go back to a PDS, where because there are government agencies that owe a government agency, they don't want to pay. So if it's a private guy who collects his money, let's just pick your thoughts. If this, that is for two years, so we've seen a few things. Yeah. There are ideas around, let's bring all of you together, ECG, Gridco, VRE. Having done ECG for a few years, would that be a great idea? No, it wouldn't. Uh, the system as it is now is perfect. Mm. It are just left with a few more tweaks here and there to mm. have it as we need it to be. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. if the, the, the conversation now in certain, for the longest time, we only had only VRA. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now the IPPs are involved. So you probably need the, the job of an independent market operator to man the, 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 the distribution room and all of that, and then probably allow for, for, the, for equity within the game. So these are, these are business, business, uh, what do you call it, decisions, business management best practices that need to be infused into the game. If you ask me now that we should be made, no. That what about the, the question go. of a private, I don't want to call it, you know, privatizing is a very big word. Yeah. So a private sector player, mm -hmm. because when I read the MCA document, they were very careful in how they used it. So PDS was not just privatization, but privatization. Looking at your revenue targets, your ability to raise revenue within the period you just brought in the cashless. Yeah. Is there a case for a private sector-led power distributor? My answer would be a good yes and no. Okay. Because it's, 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 it's double-footed. Yeah. Now, if you have a company, mm. let's, say, let's take the PDS era. Mm-hmm. When the PDS thing was happening, there was a condition precedent for CP4. Yeah. Yeah. I know you know about the CP4. Mm, mm. CP4 guaranteed PDS all shortfalls. And when PDS collects all the money, they take what they need for operations before they remit the rest. Are we doing the same currently with ECG? It's a big word. That no. would have helped you. If you do that, then you have enough money for operations and CAPEX. Mm -hmm. But as I speak now, whatever we get goes into a basket and then what? It's shared mm. per the cash waterfall uh, percentages. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to survive with that. But you have to pay people you owe to. Exactly. So you can't use all the money you collect to sort yourself of out. Of course. Because the people supplying you power also need their money. Of course. But the thing is, if you live from hand to mouth, hand to mouth, then you'll be sitting down thinking that mm. you need a, someone else to come in. Mm. But if you bring another person in and give them all the whistles and bells, mm. then what's the essence of bringing the person in? Then probably you should do the same. For your own... Uh, Maybe because you they were going to collect more because they were not going to use the public sector facing Let the collection. Let me tell you something. They, they were, for example... Nobody right now, nobody mm -hmm. can tell you that the PDS era was the best. It's not true. In terms of collection? In terms of collections, no, it's not true. PDS was for five months. Mm. Five months. Mm. You see people coming up with graphs that compare a five-month period with a whole year. Mm. That's not being fair. Work. Mm. That's intellectual dishonesty. Mm. You need to be categorical and do it like for like and mm. compare the math mm -hmm. and make sure that you are doing right by the, by the company. Mm -hmm. The company currently is doing very, very well, even way better than the PDS era. Mm -hmm. The point now is this. What is the business model that we want to see? Mm. We cannot be doing, we cannot run a, such a huge parastatal uh, company like the way we run a cottage industry, mm. where you have one basket, everything comes into the basket, then you put a paper and a pen and a ruler, this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here. Yeah. No. You need to find a proper business, maybe you need to get some people with a finance background in a room to fashion out the business model for you, where now you don't pay for things like on the spot, mm -hmm. you have a better credit line, you pay for things with letters of credit and all of that. We need to have a holistic conversation. We need to look at the whole business approach and come up with a decision to say, hey, this is where we are going. But if government will be able to give ECG the same CP4 letter, I believe strongly we should be able to, because don't forget, this is the, this is the thing. You purchase electricity in what? Dollars. And you sell in what? CDs. PURC tries to play catch up with the quarterly exchange. But the forex is what? 
So you're playing, you're playing, you're, you're trying to solve a problem that keeps what shifting. Does the source of the power you buy determine how it's expensive? So for example, power generated by Akosombo Dam or Bui Dam may not be as expensive as power generated by KTTP or maybe Sunona Sogli. So I'm, 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 I'm building a question so that if you had more locally produced CDG dominated costs mm -hmm. in generation, it will solve your FX problem? Yes. It's equally, you should also say, what if ECG is allowed to, let's say, export power? ECG doesn't have an export license. Let's say ECG is allowed to export power. If ECG exports power, it will be bringing in some, somewhat, some so forex. So it guarantees some forex in your collections yes, to, to balance? Also show, to also shore ECG up to balance, but currently we don't have that. So your, your, your sister companies sell directly? Yeah, they... they because they, they feel like if we give all to you to sell, we can't trust you to pay back. So I have a 100,000 shoes, mm -hmm. and I give to you to distribute for people, and you pay back to me. Why won't I sell the shoe to the outside person as the, the producer and sell to you first? But the thing is this. You have a regulated market, and you have a deregulated market. Don't bring my sister companies into a fight that they are not into, because me, I love them. They export power based on their, their description. Yeah. Their description allows them to. Gridco is the one mandated to what? Transmit. Yeah. So yeah. If I want to send power outside this country, I cannot, ECG cannot do it without the help of Gridco. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a structure. As I said, mm -hmm. no need to separate it because it's a perfect working formula that just needs a few tweaks here and there. Now, in the same vein, most IPPs are contracted to who? ECG. Yeah, ECG. So if I, if, if I am to say there's an IPP that is sitting down idle, mm. okay, that has 200 megawatts. Yet, even though I'm not using it, oh, let me, even though ECG is not using it, ECG still has to pay it a certain amount of money every month. Mm. How has that affected my cash flow? So, if there's a possibility mm -hmm. to start this power plant up and export that power across the border to raise Forex, why shouldn't that happen? Since you are still the last mile. Yes. But with the last mile... But in the terms thing, of the export, it will be the grid code, not you. Yes, but the power plant is contracted to ECG. So ECG can give its blessing to the power plant. But somebody say, if you can't finish collecting money owed you locally, but this how one can is, you collect money owed for this you? One is, this one is on the high tension. I'm coming. But the, I mean, the question somebody asks is, you are not able to collect 26% of your money. Yes, but this would how assure me. This would assure me cash because it's government paying. Uh, not government. How? How do? The, how? The, 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 the neighboring country is the one paying. The neighboring country's ECG is paying or because they yes, their their neighboring country's ECG is will paying. pay you in dollars. You pay me in dollars because let's say I have two hundred megawatts. We we push it up into the grid. It's transported to Burkina Faso. The IPP is contracted to ECG. You understand? Gridco would make money from it. The other neighboring country at the border or at the metering point where the power enters this place, that is where you make your money. Do we, we have do enough care. power to sell? Right now, we do have some power plants that are... We just had the new power plant come online, early power, uh, which is about 200 megawatts, which is available that we have to be controlling how we use it. But So but there, there could be periods of excess yes. where you could sell yes. and then collect that forex Put it in a cash water for everybody is happy. Yes, to balance the equation out. So what is, what is stopping that? That's a conversation that's good. That's being had as we speak with us and uh, what do you call it, with the Energy Commission it, and the, your, the power your, your your con colleague entities may not like that arrangement. Oh, I don't I don't want to use the word they may because not that's like. possibly the only impediment I see because the way you've explained it, because all the power you buy is dollar denominated mm -hmm. and all the power you sell is city denominated. You're already in a, in a hole. So You're if you, if you want to fix the hole, you should be able to also sell a abroad to make some, some forex. You need to look. The, the, the conversation is real. In the same vein, if, if you talk about privatizing the company, mm -hmm. how are you going to block, block the shortfalls of forex? You, we need to be smart about how we need to move away from But the general our business view about Ghanaians is that mm -hmm. if we don't have enough reliable, available, affordable power, we shouldn't be selling. Nobody, so you need to answer the question nobody, of accessibility, no, availability, affordability will, for Ghanaians. The Bible you says, sell. love your neighbor as yourself, not love your neighbor more than yourself. Exactly. Whatever contract you put out there is subject to what? Availability. Because if you are going to consume locally, today I don't have, I am sorry. That, that makes sense. If today I have, hey, knock, knock, today I have, I'm, I'm bringing it your way, yeah. fine, you take it. 
Yeah. We are enjoying the longest winter ever in the Republic. Yeah. I don't know if you've realized. Yes, it's very I don't cold. remember the last time. So power consumption. Exam. Power consumption. So is low. March is also a question of heat. Yes. So as I'm so speaking, demand is high when it's when it's hot. But as I'm speaking to you, for over three months now, we've seen record low consumption, and and you have power plants sitting down. So uh, that would be. That so would you be. could actually contract for a three month period where mm. there's this down uh, period where you have this kind of buffer mm -hmm. to cushion yourself and there will not be so much stress on the system. Do you system. think we've diversified the fuel sources of power enough? We don't have enough solar. Hydro seems to have peaked and a lot of what is coming is hybrid of gas and liquid fuel. And liquid fuel. When you look at that chain, Again, looking at the FX exposure and just availability, what would be your advice on where we should diversify towards? So for me, to answer that, the first thing I'll say is think about energy security mm -hmm. first. Okay. Before you start looking at the fancy things out there. Good. Solar is good, but it is not an inductive power. And you need inductive power to power industry. Good. So if you quickly jump and shift to, what do you call it? Solar, because it's, no, it cannot guarantee you industrialization. But so it must, can take care of the domestic use. Yes. And you free up power but for the industries using the inductive ones. Uh -huh, but the, 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 the point now is this. How much of it do you need and when do you need it? Mm -hmm. So we need to have a careful approach to it. Okay. But as for going green, it's the way to go. Because in my opinion and in the opinion of most people, even, even uh, dams are green. Renewable, yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, it's generally cleaner it's, than yeah, dams, are, yeah. dams are better dams than dams are green than and to some price. extent too they are seeing gas as, as as somewhat green gas is cleaner Natural than gas, is yeah, cleaner than, than liquid fuel yes but i'm not going to listen to that and abandon my liquid fuel plants why because there are times that i need to fire them up because there's a shortage so why isn't gas cheaper than liquid fuel it, they are because but, liquid fuel is but, always ex imported you have gas you're producing here but it's about your infrastructure and if your infrastructure can carry the gas to the power plants. And but it's also, about paying Ghana gas so they have enough money to develop the infrastructure to give you more but gas. But the whole thing, all what we are talking about now is how to fund each and every state institution's OPEX and CAPEX. There's a time where you sit down and look whether if the tariff is the case, how do you manage I'm just tariff? saying that strategically, mm -hmm. looking forward, don't you think that Ghana gas should be the company you pay quickest because they are cleaner fuel, and they, they now have some gas that they're able to now send the other way around. Yeah. So if Ghana gas, you net to Ghana gas to the tune you're indebted to them, you're sabotaging yourself. So let me explain something. This is the difficulty, the pure difficulty of the game. Mm -hmm. Let's say you even make a billion. Mm. Will you be, and they, under the cash waterfall, they make the allocation to Ghana gas. Is it enough? Depends on who's, no, who's it need not, it no. is. No, what, what was their bill? They brought you a bill. Yeah. So they, whatever bill Ghana Gas will bring. It will not be, you can't pay all. You can't pay all. Now, why can't you pay all? ECG itself has to go through some capex expenditure for it to be able to stand on its own and say, and the main thing that brings money in is what meters. Mm. Now you have a perfect system where you collect what mm. you are cashless. Mm -hmm. You have a perfect system where you can see, as I'm speaking to you, there's a new uh, work performance tool mm. where each, each staff is allocated uh, 400 customers mm. that they have to visit. You understand? So with, with such a, how much of that is enough? So now if you take, let's say, even ECG buys uh, from, from, from Gridco, the power coming in is about total purchase at the end of the month is about, let's say, uh, 1.8 billion. Mm. You take away 26% losses. That's how much? Uh, maybe, I don't know. One, what, what, uh, you, you have about three, three fourths of that. Yeah, three fourths of that. About one five. Yes. That one five, you take 12% of tax off. That's about one three. Mm. If you have to buy fuel, how much is that? But now, the biggest thing that will hit you there is you have a debt of about $59.5 million of. Uh, no, what I'm just trying to get at no, with my question is. I want is, us to have. We, don't we, don't, what I'm trying to say, and I know we don't have time, that yeah. the cheaper the fuel, the more reliable it is the better for us long term. That is true. So our diversification should be away from just liquid fuel, which is more expensive. But we use less of liquid denominated. fuel lately. We use very, very less of I'm liquid fuel. I'm happy to fuel. hear that. Extremely less. The liquid fuel is only during emergency periods. Good. Government only purchases, or we get the green light to close a buffer. When there's a shortage of maybe 200 megawatts, 150 megawatts, so buy some HFO so you can close the gap. You know, that is what government says. 
So we don't use liquid fuel to run on a daily basis, mm. no. Mm. We use gas from West, on the West Africa gas pipeline from NGAS. Uh -huh. We use gas from GMPC from the West through the reverse flow on WAPCO. Mm -hmm. So most of the power plants in Ghana run solely on what? Gas. Gas. Mm. But we, especially the ones in the West, in the uh, Takrade, they don't run on liquid fuel. Wonderful. The ones that periodically we give them some liquid fuel here and there are the ones in the thermal enclave. What has to continue, assuming you leave, mm -hmm. to ensure that the successes of the past two years don't get eroded? I would say the business or the financial model mm. has to be looked at. Mm. Because if we don't have a proper cushion on Forex, mm. we would always get the formula right, but Forex will force us to shift. So we need to find a formula that works. We need to have a proper formula as to how even Ghana Gas or the, or the fuel providers, GNPC, Ghana Gas, WAPCO and Co are all paid. Because if you have a formula that allows for some wiggle room to pay them over a period of time on each invoice, then... So your biggest risk factor is FX. At this point and in time, whoever, whatever happens, if, if that is not managed, the company cannot be sustainable. I'm telling you, that's, that's what I see from where I that's sit. That's a good place to end. Yeah. Because FX is not just for you, it's for everybody. Indeed, if the currency is weak, you will struggle in many areas. Thank you, Samad Dwik Mahama, for talking to us. We've been speaking to the ECG MD, trying to understand the sector since he took over two years and a few months ago, May 2022. We hope you've learned something new. And please put your comments in the feed so that the Communication team will respond to them even if they are not able to do so immediately. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.